glad to be here. Why don't you give us a virtual round of applause? How you feeling, Jack? Welcome back. Back on Help Online, your Friday night. We got you sorted for tonight. We have, we have. Aren't the, are the young people back at school this week? They are back at school. Oh, week, week one has just gone. How did you do in school, Jack? Let's not talk about that. How did you do in school? I was pretty good. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I was the opposite. I was in stream 10. Which was the smartest stream. All right, anyways, <laughs> we're going to get straight into it. I'm sorry, man. Yeah, it's all good, man. I'm sorry, man. We're going to get straight into it. We have got another game for you tonight. Tonight. From last week. From last week. We have the man himself, Julius Patello. We have Julius Patello. Julius Patello! Whoa. Julius whoa, whoa, whoa. Patello! Alright, he cannot hear you. He, put that back in your ear. He cannot hear you because this is called the silent challenge. But we've renamed it because we want to mix it up, spice it up. This is called the strip silent challenge. Alright, we're gonna say a few phrases to Julius while he has music bumping oh. into his ears. He can't hear us. Let's test this out, Jack. Julius! You're meant to not hear us, You're Julius. Meant to not hear us, he's gonna turn up that music so he can't. <laughs> so he can't hear us. All right, we're gonna say five phrases to him. He's gonna try and guess what we say. If he gets it wrong, he's gonna take one piece of item of clothing off his body. Item clothing off the body. Lucky he has a lot of clothing. Style of mint. Style of mint. What are you doing? You're what are you doing, man? This is the audience. You're, you're this is for video. you. All right, so we're going to start with our first phrase. Cooper, what's the first phrase? First phrase. He meant to look at my lips. I, I look at his lips. Looking, look at his lips. I like your mother's truck. I like your mother's I like your... I like, your I like it. I like it. Wrong! Ah. Wrong! 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 All right, Jack, your turn. Look at me. Look at him. Look at me. Your clothes have been stripped away. I like to vacuum. I like you vacuum. I like. No! It is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah. Okay. okay. Hey, hey, no. Since you got that right, you gotta stop. No, get off the stage. Get off, pasta. All right, carry on. <laughs> Carry on, your turn. I like to do it. I like to do it. I like. I like. His mic isn't even on. This isn't even gonna work. I like to do it. Do. <laughs> what are you? We, we can't play a strip. Right, we have got past the bowler. Fuck a lot with us. And we hope you've tuned in right at home in your lounge with a couple of friends and a couple of snacks. Snacks. Snacks, so why don't you chill in to bowl the fuck out all the way. What's up everyone? Man, it's such a privilege to be able to share tonight and uh, good news is, tonight is the very last night we're having youth on Zoom. And so that means a few things, all right? So no more awkward conversations, no more trying to figure out if they're not talking or they're just lagging, uh, no more, hey, you're muted, okay, all of that's gone and we go back next week uh, to normal youth. So man, I'm so stoked. In fact, let me just take this opportunity to say a massive, massive shout out to all the hub leaders, youth pastors and youth leaders that have grinded through lockdown. Yeah, this is your opportunity now to press that little clap reaction. That's the one, man, shout out to you guys for keeping this thing moving. And tonight I actually just want to talk about something that I feel will really minister to where you guys are at, uh, considering we're coming out of lockdown, and that's looking at how we deal with uh, the stress and the worries and the anxiety that we might be, that we might be faced with, right? Especially like we, we know these stressful times, especially if your parents have just gotten home from work and you forgot to do chores or you forgot to pull the meat out of the freezer, that moment. So it's, it's when we start um, getting overwhelmed with stress and with worry and with anxiety that our minds start to go all sorts of places and maybe even we start to wrestle or make decisions that we don't want to make or we're not going to be proud of. 
I know stress well. In fact, can I, can I just share one of the most embarrassing moments I've had? And, and you need to understand, usually when people say embarrassing moments, they're talking about when they're younger, when they're kids, right? Instead of saying, uh, miss, they said mom. Uh, they slipped over in the mud in front of people. They uh, asked someone out and they got rejected and started crying in front of everybody. Okay, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like I was, this is only not too long ago. I'm an adult. And one of the most embarrassing moments I had, I was speaking at a school in Waikato and uh, part of the job I was doing was like five, six hours of nonstop talking, right? Throughout the entire day. And this can get a bit like draining physically, emotionally, and one of the important details, and I'm really embarrassed to share this, is I don't know what it is about me, but for some reason, I am not able to, or maybe it's I don't want to, uh, fart in public. I don't know what it is. I just, <laughs> I can't fart around people. Maybe it's um, I'm shy, or uh, maybe it's I respect you enough as a human being to not pollute the air around you. What well, I don't know, but I just cannot fart around people. And so when I'm doing the job, right, six hours in front of people, there's not enough time by myself where I can, you know. <laughs> and so often what happens is after a full day of talking, I usually get into the car. <laughs> so uh, This is so ugly. I get into the car and then I just start letting loose. So just start... <laughs> going hard, just getting it all out, uh, you know, start hotboxing the car with like human smoke. If you reacted to that, hub leaders, take note of who reacted to that reference because uh, you should catch up with them after. But that's usually my routine after a full day of talking. And so what happened this time, because the end of the week, it's Friday, I just finished his full day of talking. I get into the car and as normal, I'm about to do the same thing I usually do. Start letting loose. The problem was, while I'm doing that, I hear a knock knock on the window. And I turn around and the teacher that booked me in to do these talks had followed me to my car and, and they wanted to th thank me. You do not understand the pressure I was under. I was sitting in my car, I've just filled the car up with my farts and there's this teacher outside wanting to talk to me. And we, we lock eyes. <laughs> It's such an awkward exchange. She's like ready to say something to me. I'm just stuck. I'm just frozen. I don't know what to do. You know, I even mouth, uh, I need to go. <laughs> she doesn't move. She even tries to open the door. And, and there's just this, this panic I go into. Like my heart starts beating faster. I have no idea what to do. I actually just freeze and I'm just staring at her for a solid like couple seconds. And it's so, it's so awkward. Right, and it eventually gets to a point because she wants to say something, I have to wind down the window. The worst thing I've ever seen there. You know, I could see the, the smile on her face go from happy, wanting to thank me, to wanting to get rid of me as fast as possible and never have me back at the school. So I'd just like to apologize to uh, Morrinsville College. I'm sorry for doing that to your teacher. But it's, it's, it's at that point, right, that I'm talking about. It's that moment of, of stress and pressure where our brains freeze up. You might have heard the terms fight or flight. And it's true, our brain gets these options whenever we're in high pressure situations to either face the challenge or run away from the challenge. But often I feel like one of the things we do is we just lock up, we freeze up. Okay, and, and I know that you've been in that situation too, not that situation, okay, but maybe a situation where you've been under immense stress, immense pressure, that instead of facing the challenge or even just, you know, running away and trying to get help, you just freeze up, you lock up, you uh, choose to just confine yourself. And maybe even over lockdown, this has been happening for you. Maybe for you, it's uh, the, the stress and worry of all the changes that have happened around you. That now that you're going back into, uh, you know, coming out of lockdown, things aren't as restricted and there's restrictions being taken off. And maybe you're afraid of all the changes that have happened already. That you're worried, oh, what if my friends have moved on? Or what if I've fallen too far behind? What if I can't pick that stuff up again? Or maybe it's even personal. Maybe you've made some good changes during lockdown. And you're worried that now you're going back out, you're so stressed out about returning to some of your old behaviors or uh, negative ways of doing your life. 
Whatever it might be, you need to understand that that's not the life that God has got for you. God has not called you to a life of shrinking in and, and, and putting away people and just locking yourself inward. God has called you to live a life out in the open, exploring the adventures and wonders that he's got planned for you. And so that's why I love um, there's, there's such amazing advice that's given in um, Philippians 4. Uh, and I'm reading this from the New International Version. It says, don't be anxious about anything, right? Don't worry about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and by petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And this is my favorite part. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. No matter what you might be stressed or worried about, or anxious about, maybe it's stuff going on at home, maybe it's what's going to happen at school now that you're going back there and surrounded by so many people, maybe it's just what's going on in our world and our, our country even, maybe you're, you're so worried about that stuff that you just feel yourself shrinking in, freezing up even. God wants you to have his peace. And I love that, eh? that's so gangster, the, that he's, he's got this peace for you that transcends understanding. And what that means is that, that when, when it even doesn't make sense to everyone else, when it's logical for you to have these uh, emotional breakdowns or to give in or make these dumb decisions, when it makes sense and it's logical to go down these different paths, God's peace, which transcends all of that, will, will, will come upon you. That you'll have this like steady, stable foundation of knowing that God has got this under control. That's why I believe Jesus um, said this in, in John 14, 27. This is Jesus talking to people he cares about and he says, John 14, 27, it's peace. Peace I leave you with. My peace I give you. And I love that he identifies this. He says, I do not give to you as the world gives. So do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Man, and tonight, that's my prayer for you guys. That whatever stresses and worries you might have, that God's peace would be made real in your life. This peace that doesn't seem logical, that transcends what people might think is the uh, understandable response to the pressure you're under, that you'd have this kind of peace that you'd be like, actually, nah, I'm gonna make it through this. Actually, it's okay. Actually, I'm not going to change my values. Actually, I'm not going to make that decision. I'm okay. That's the kind of peace that God wants you to have, the peace that Jesus leaves with you. And so again, I want to say exactly the same words that Jesus said to his disciples. Man, don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't be afraid. Let me just quickly pray for you. So uh, God, we just want to pray for every single one of us that uh, has worries and has our own stresses and whatever pressure we might be under, God. Lord, I thank you that you're there, ready and willing to move on our behalf. And so God, we want to almost do a trade tonight where we trade in our stress and our worries and our anxieties for your peace. So God, to every single person, every young mind and young heart that is troubled or worried, even for those I believe that are struggling with sleep because of the pressure that their minds are under. God, let your peace just fall in that room, fall in that person's life. The peace that transcends all understanding, we pray in your name, Jesus. Man, it's so cool that, that man, we can gather together like this and I'm looking forward to next week when we can actually meet in person. But it, it's, I just cannot uh, let this opportunity pass without praying another prayer. Uh, and to be honest, this is the prayer that gives me peace throughout every single situation I'm in. It's this decision that I made years ago to accept Jesus into my heart and to let him guide me and teach me. It's, it's that decision that gives me peace, knowing regardless of what happens, what changes I see in my family, what changes I see in uh, relationships and friendships in my life as a whole. I can rest assured that God is with me. Jesus is with me. And that's the prayer I want to pray right now. So uh, whether you know Jesus or not, or maybe you 
you started a relationship with him, but you're not as close as you should be, I pray you pray this prayer with me and maybe you can chat to your youth leader, youth pastor after this uh, and, and talk about this decision. But just uh, repeating after me, I just want to say this prayer. Cool, let's pray. Uh, dear Jesus, I thank you for tonight and I thank you for the sacrifice that you made giving up your life so that I can have mine. And tonight, I acknowledge my need of you and I invite you into my heart to be my Lord and be my Saviour and to be my peace. I pray this in your mighty name, Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. I can't hear any of you saying Amen, but Amen! Hey, look, if you made that decision, that is sick. It's the best decision I ever made, and I guarantee it's the best decision you will ever make. So chat to your leaders, chat to your youth pastor, and uh, man, we're so excited. Let's go next week. We're going to be seeing each other in real life. That's all from me. We'll catch you guys next time. Oh, snap. What a fire word from p Fact. Uh, thanks so much, Pastor Bowler. Uh, just remember, young people, if anything what he said spoke to you, make sure you talk to a trusted youth leader, maybe even your hub leader. Uh, let them know because they care about you. They're doing this journey with you. And uh, yeah, they love you. Yeah, we love you. Uh, also, that is us for tonight for your Friday Hub Online. And we hope to see you this Sunday, church at home, 10 a.m. and the 5 p.m. Tune in, invite a friend, and also, why don't you get connected into an e-group right throughout the week. Talk to someone you trust, but make sure you stay connected and be the revolution this week. That's facts. That's facts. That's that is us wrapping it up, and we'll see you later.